lot of eggs in that Sand King basket. He better have some big pearl strikes this game because that, that's about it. You know, remaining. yeah, they've got clips, yeah. you know, you've got kinetic field. That's sort of a lockdown. It, it's half of one, I suppose, I mean, but everyone else is kind of starved out. You know, so let's go with Elk. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm putting Elk. Elk. Let's try for that. At least deaths. Uh, I went Moon. I, mean, I think DC is probably going to win this game, but I went it, Timber Saw. I, I don't know. I think Jugger will one. die least, actually. Okay. It's possible, at least. Yeah. Uh, most runes picked up by minute 10. DC will emphasize that so much. Yeah. But so will LFY because they need to. I actually, I don't know about that. That's like a coin toss for me. All right, let's see if there's a coin toss on this fight. No rune for Wii, that's for sure. Not down bottom, at least. And They're going to book it up top. Never mind, Alchemist is not going to book it, actually. He just heads back to the jungle. Mm. All right, I can't change my predictions anymore. We're locked. Yeah. We're locked. So in. I ended up with... Did we do the same thing? 20 uh, to 30, Weeha, Resolution, and DC. I did Moon Meander for three instead of okay. Resolution. So All right. I switched so. it up a little. That means we will either... We will both be wrong. Okay. <laughs> Love great. So, Leaf is uh, in favor of LFY, but could be a little bit worse for DC, and they still have some kill potential. Pudge should go rot level one. He's just about to hit level two. And then once they get hooked, things uh, might open up here for DC just a little bit. Oh, Alk mid. Oh, my. Stole Alice, kill for the Ursa. That is such a big kill. Not just because Alk was having a good start, but look at how much he's losing. Back up top, though. Jow 8. He gets initiated on Pugna, only level 2, not able to do much. They will bring him down. Razor comes in, finishes off the kill on Rubik, and it's going to go the way of LFY. Pudge does get off the suicide, minimizing their losses here, but Resolution not in the clear yet. Thunder Strike still doing some good damage. One more from the Razor, not quite as he has a field. Stick. Field not survive. Very nice. Oh, yeah, Super. Gonna die he's gonna get it turned on. on. Yeah, Soxa, he gets credit for that one. So in the end, it's not in the jungle. Misery level two on Pudge, bumps into Yao. They'll just kind of say hi to each other and go their separate ways, it seems like. This is where it's important, in my opinion, for LFY to realize that this top lane's fine. Just leave the Razor alone. And they're doing exactly that. They're gonna move away the Disruptor and the Pugna. Because what you want to do now is you want to pressure on Nice. They're gonna get the kill here on Misery. Get yeah. rotation from Xiao Wei. And now they're gonna pressure into the Radiant Jungle. Because this is how you contest the Alchemist at this point in the game. They made it very clear that Alchemist jungling. They're gonna run at him and shut down this game. They're gonna get socks. They'll find two kills. Yeah, both supports for DC get picked off. Very nice rotations. Pugna now level 3, starting to get active around the map. Weeha finding a little bit of farm in the mid lane. He does hit his level 6. One of the first roadblocks here for Alchemist. Now he gets the chemical rage so he can farm. It's been all boots of travel on Razors. Are our phase boots coming back? Um, I think it's really good in these kind of games where you were expecting to try and try. He's going to get lifted top though. Very nice. He's all alone. From DC. That's greedy. Nice kill. What you needed. Something I really enjoy when watching DC when they're playing their best is Down how bottom. quick they are at adapting to the situations of the game. And they just showed it again there. Yeah, maybe in trouble. Moon Meander now rotates in. It's a level 5 Timber Saw. They'll go for the kill on Chow 8, and he tries the TP out. Will not happen. And they pick up two around the map. DC striking back here, reclaiming some of that loss. Uh, it's just the storyline of every Alchemist game is how is Alchemist doing? Um. And we are having a way too good time in this That's game right now. That's how he's doing. Yeah. Yeah. He he has Ooh. armlet minute eight thirty, and about sixty CS. And Soxa. this was after they had an unfavorable lane matchup, and they invaded. Oh, Sox is in trouble. Yep. In a little in bit trouble. deep. Kind of got sandwished there. Feeling the alchemist's Radiant strength. So all oh, bottom lane. There we go. Too slow there. Good blade fury. Looks back now, Moon Man. No, it's Misery that gets glimpsed. Stolen stun, sinking, gets a taste of his own medicine as he's locked down. Now he stuns the other way on too. They will bring down the punch first. Misery forces the timber chain out. They can't quite get the same king as he blinks away. Soxa, 50 HP as he makes it out. DDC can't get in range to finish him off as he burrow strikes into the trees. TP home. He will live. It's a one for two. The alchemist died in the fray also. Yeah, this was on the actually, other side of the map. Oh, wow, exactly. Was... There were two fights going on at once. I was keeping half an eye on it. So what happened was Pugna did get the top tower, and Alchemist got. Oh wait, we're not done yet. He's yep, down go bottom. Some... Oh, oh, big need... damage. Gets DDC. Supers on the run, but a nice stun from Yao on two. Timber saw on Resolution getting low now, and he comes back in. Timber chain away. Resolution in big trouble. The Chakram slowing down the bear, but this is going to be enough. He does have his face boots. Defensive hook from Misery keeps his buddy alive. 
do get the kill on the disruptor. The jig is up. Find the disruptor. Soxa goes in. DDC gets off the static storm. Kinetic field now. The counter initiation. DC in a lot of trouble as they lose Rezo as well as Misery. Weha still on the high ground. He's going to try to make it away as Yao looking to chase him down. Does have the burrow strike. Blink dagger up. He connects. And stable concoction on the way. Does find a stun on two. Big damage now coming from the outcome as he kills the Earth. <laughs> He will still go down, compliments the plasma field, and now the glimpse on the Soxa. DC will get cleaned up, but you find a big kill before going down. It still hurts. That's a brutal fight. That should also be a Roshan for the Dire, I think. If they go and check it now and know that it's up, the moment Ursa spawns, he can just run straight down there. Now, they're even trying here to get Moon Meander. Fairly unlikely kill here. They have a glimpse, so if he sticks around, he's actually being semi-greedy here. He's actually dead, I think. Oh, no. Way too long. Yeah. Girl Strikes in, takes a lot of damage. He actually almost dies in turn, but knows his limits. Now the glimpse back, but Moon might still be able to make it away. Timber chain to a close tree, perhaps not. That's a Timber negative. with the plasma kill, they'll lock him. First of all. <laughs> yep. Or so we'll get it. DDC charges forward. Yao with the stun to start things off on Timber. It's a hook. They wanted it defensively, but he has to commit suicide in the end. Soxa may be in some trouble here. Misery nope. Step. Misery oh, TP's whoa, whoa. out. Benefit there we go. Oh, they on got the top side. Rubik. Initiation on the Soxa. Defensive hook pulls him back. He'll be fine. No BKB. Super with the refresher. He's so strong right now. Soxa again. All right, he pops the BKB for that. Maybe they get another one here. Misery also left behind. Yeah, it'll be an easy kill in the punch. Okay. I thought, you know, maybe just Rubik for a BKB could be worth it, but yeah, two for nil, certainly not. Nice set of pickoffs here for LFY. Maybe they just head mid now and try and finish off this barracks. No buybacks available on those two heroes. Of course, they don't know that, but... This could be a dead barracks. the side of Rax in 10 seconds with Axe Refresher. Um, he needs he 20 does. seconds on the second. There's still definitely no trust their advantage. This, this melee will... There's Maybe not even fall before the support responds. Oh my god, no back glyph. door protection. No glyph. Uh, ah, they should still get 15 seconds. This is definitely. Okay. Oh, it's a little bit close. The back door protection at least makes it interesting. Wait, oh, what? Oh. Jesus. Super stunned up by a concoction. They do give it to the Timber Song. So now he's got the double chakra flying about. Oh, the top lane is actually in trouble. So did he finish off that tier 3 tower, it looks like? Yep, they sure did. A little bit of uh, guaranteed damage there on the ranged barracks. Very nice. BOT is now up on Timbersaw, so Moon Meander opting for all mobility instead of that BKB you were talking about. 30 second cooldown with the Octarine Core. It's pretty nice, but BKB's got to be coming out next. And they might feel like now that they lost a light, uh, an entire lane of racks that he will be a bit more on wave clear duty. And then he can travel to the fight so that they can get the conditions right for fighting. Because the, the move speed in the fight itself from the travels, I don't think will play that big of a role. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It's like map mobility. Clear out those waves. Here we go. 10 second BKB up on the Juggernaut. Gives him a little more flexibility in these fights. We'll see how long we've got on Roche coming up soon. But MKB now out on Ursa. Pretty scary damage output on this bear. So only one defusal charge left. Yeah, uh, that's a good point, actually. That's something we haven't really kept much of an eye on, the, the status on the defusals. Uh, eight on the jug and one on the Ursa. Oh, no. Start playing a roll. Oh. They see Misery. They find the stun to start it off, but they disengage. Razor goes up to the high ground. The Omni Slash in the backline doing so much here. It brings down the Disruptor first. Juggernaut still going forward. Where is teammate? So Razor gets to kill on Pudge in the backline. Another one of these fights where it's cores versus supports. Resolution on the run. Alchemist trying to focus on Super here, but he won't be able to keep his Juggernaut alive. This is a whiff team fight for DC. They've lost most of their cores. Luka is left behind. He'll be killed next. All this for a Disruptor. It seemed like a really good Omni Slash at first, but it broke up this fight into all of these little 1v1s. And then DC just couldn't handle it. This Razor is just... If, if they don't manage to uh, to get a couple kills to early DC, they will just get run over by the double stat, the double eye of the storm. Weeha had to run away from the Razor very early in that fight and just give space. And the Ursa gets to, like you were saying, just hammer into the timber. And that just very quickly only goes one way when yeah. that starts happening. So 
Yeah, I, the the big hero for me in the dire in this game is just really the Sand King. It's, it's all of these fights, when when Sand King gets these multiple stuns off, it's what sets the tone of the fight. It what sets their cores up to shine. And Yano has been doing a really excellent job this game in the SK to look at to what looks like now almost the game. They have a two racks lead against Al. That is, I don't know what the win rate is on that, but it's going to be really damn good. Yeah. Absolutely. I really like the way Super is playing this Razor, too. He's now got the BOTs, but, you know, went for a sort of a normal right-click kind of a build. Just get some good beefy stats, drum, S and Y, and now he's moved into the Agonim's Refresher and kind of trans transcended into this late-game Tower Seager, and it, it's working pretty well. I mean, now it feels like this Dire team is almost unstoppable. Ursa rebuys the Diffusal just to get some new charges. Okay. And I think something, something people tend to forget when they look at Razor is that Eye of the Storm gives minus armor. So mm -hmm. when you're running these two Eyes of the Storm next to each other and you stay on a target, that target very quickly runs out of all of their armor. And then even though this Razor hits for 200, all of a sudden he hits for more than 200. Like they, they will go into negative armor and he will start crushing them. And then Eye of the Storm itself also deals physical damage. So it amplifies itself. Yeah. So yes, it is a great tower sieging build, but it is a great combat build too. Like this damage just very quickly becomes insurmountable for DC in these fights. And they're going for what seems to be a last ditch effort here. If this fight fails for them, that's probably the GG call. So we need to come up big here, get a good ward first off. There's a counter smoke from LFY as well, and they're going for the big wraparound. I think no one's going to find each other here. We'll see. LFY go deep into Radiant territory. Both teams dropping the scans, both teams missing. Okay. The about face now. Here we go. Oh, Juggernaut, he gets caught first. Resolution pops the BKB, but he gets stunned. He'll be brought down first. He does have a buyback. It's not over yet. But now the rest of DC trying to retreat. Super makes it to the high ground. Follow up stun from Yao. They're dropping like flies as now the loot is moving in here. We pops the BKB. He's on the run. This will be a tough one. He TPs out. They've got no oh, way nice to interrupt TP. it. Bunch. Abyssal Blade still on cooldown there. So they do get two cores, both of them with buybacks. I mean, pretty brutal. I don't know if LFY can end off this, but another one of these team fights that shows how pretty convincingly this game is in their favor. I mean, they're going yeah, to they're gonna go to your force. They'll force the buyback here. Yeah. Good move. Oh, they might be able to find Chow 8. Force staff back. Another force staff back. Another one. Glimmer K. He will not live. This could actually be okay for Radiant. Omni Slash bouncing all around. Timbersaw brings down the Pug as well as the Disruptor. They've already gotten the Sand King. And now it's a fourth one. Ursa falls. A godlike streak goes the way of Moomeander. That's with buyback gold, though. Yeah, let's take a look at the overall penalty. recap. So it's a four for... Oh, that doesn't count like that. I see it but It's still... This This is very, very good for DC. Being much anything. Of all... Oh, no, that, I mean, that part's true. But at Just least it's one Just watch it be the game decider here. He pops it and they get racked because yes. he's killing it with I have the spawn. It's a buff. That, anything that you can buff and then steal something else and still use it, I think, is not so bad on your There's certainly worse things to steal. But we'll see. Lift available here for the Dire. Slow and steady. Resolution taking a fair bit of damage. Super pops the BKB and actually charges out of the base. That is Very not Very aggressive happening. play. They need to be very careful not to get short, right. but yeah, if they just jump on this race, this could be bad. Hook on the down. Oh no! They catch the Sand King. Done the other way. Razor comes in, then pops the refresher. He's gonna pop that second ult soon. I think BKB starting to stack up. Misery will get finished off, but now and pops the BKB. He's getting low at the center, bringing we ever no so low. They kill huh? the Alchemist. They also killed the Sand King though, and now Super. He's getting pretty low. This side. Uh, Hug knob on the high ground, he gets stunned, he can't keep life draining, but he does, he breaks down Sasha. Chow Ace is the king of the mountain right now, as he does stay alive, but Super does finally fall. They knock down Chow Ace, Resolution slips forward, buyback now from the Rubik. All this life drain is really starting to hurt at this stage. He's up on the high ground again, DDC almost dies, Moonmeander can't find him, he doesn't have the detection, they bring down the Pudge, the Juggernaut getting low, but Moonmeander finds the kill on the Pugna. It is a bloodbath to the extreme, but I think LFY are the ones in a lot of trouble. The buybacks come from DC, they use all three of them. And this comes back from the Disruptor, but they are out of resources to hold the barracks, and I think DC might have just done it here since. They're gonna run back. They're scared of this Ursa being able to kill off Moon Meander, and then he will be. Well, he actually does have the fight, I guess. Resolution, he doesn't have one. They're re engaging. We'll go for the Rax. 
question is if they can get the third lane. This is still really expensive for them, actually. They've committed a lot. It does look like they will be successful in getting Megas here. Dealing more is destroyed. Yeah, still 70 seconds before we get more Sanking. He's the big up. one. And can actually win this fight if they have the Sanking stun. Good meander good hook. trying to box them out. They get the barracks now on the front line. Misery gets jumped on by the Ursa. They'll find the kill there, but I think it's too little too late. The Megas could do go down. Razor gets his buyback. This he game uses is not it. over at all yet. They kill the Ursa. Now he has to buy back. Good meander on his way out. Oh, whoa, what happened? Oh, is that a glimpse? <laughs> I don't know. That was weird. He pops his BKB. He goes for the TP. Oh, it's going to be close, but he gets back. Okay. So LFY, as you said, it's Megas, but they kind of hold on. They have to use a few buybacks themselves, Razor and Ursa. So that kind of levels out the buybacks DC used earlier. And now Pugna pops his. I think LFY thinking about an all-in play here. There is a Roche if they want it. They know that Pudge is dead for a minute, but the other heroes oh, will be up. The question oh. is how well did they keep track? That's a rapier. Rapier for Ursa. Yeah, how well did they keep track of the Radiant Five is the question. Elk has one, Timber has one, and that's it, I think, right? So, if they if they focus one of those heroes first, that could be their loss. But if they get a, a pick on even a hero like Pudge or Rubik, just like any sort of good start like that, where they get ahead in the fight, makes a big difference. And their own Sand King is 300 gold from buyback. If they get, like, a tier 4 and 1 kill or something like that, Yao could find himself a second life here. Here we go. We in the front lines. He needs to be careful. He does have the buyback, but you don't want to burn it straight away. He gets off the BKB, but he's just taking too much damage. He goes down. Resolution now pops his BKB, joins the fray as Moon Meander charges forward. BKB on as well. Buyback now from the Alchemist. They do lose the tier 4 tower. Moon Meander about to lose his BKB with the double chakra. He's doing a fair bit of damage here as Leha finds a stun on one. Static from Kinetic Field. Can they get in to close the gap? Yeah, I'll pop to the epicenter. Weeha could die back here. He's getting low, but he does get hooked. Maybe they just focus on the throne. Still a glyph. This is getting scary for LFY. BKB popped by Super. They're starting to focus the throne, but DC seem to have the reinforcements to handle this. They're trading kills now, but they lose Ursa. They lose Razor. Moon Meander just barely goes down. But the creeps, they kill the throne back at the dire, and DC managed to do it. What a ridiculous finish 71 minutes in. Digital Chaos do find the win. What <laughs> absolute ridiculous late game this was. Oh.